All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're all having a great day. And this video is gonna kind of be like a town hall. Get all our thoughts out there, how we Yankee fans are feeling about their recent stretch of play lately, which of course has been brutal, not fun to watch, very frustrating to watch. And yeah, kind of just gonna go into what my concerns are, my outlook on this team going forward, and whether or not I'm still optimistic as hell, which spoiler, I still kind of am, but there definitely are some things we gotta go over. First things first, don't make the bad stretch longer than it actually is. I'm seeing a lot of people doing this. The big number everyone is using is their last 49 games, which dates back to when they were 49 and 17. People will then mention how they're 23 and 26 since then, which is almost two months of mediocre baseball. While technically correct, that paints a false narrative because they actually started off that stretch 12 and 7. It's really the last 30 games that have been the problem where they're a dreadful 11 and 19. So forget the last 49, no, it's the last, basically the last month's worth of games where they've been playing terribly. But still, that's 30 games where the Yankees brand of baseball has not lived up to its reputation. And they've thrown away a home field advantage in a potential ALCS rematch against the Astros. But the team's focus is quite clearly, and ultimately this is my mindset as well, they're operating like a team that has a 10 game lead in the division. What matters is that despite an 11 and 19 stretch, the Yankees are still in a phenomenal position in the AL East. And that's solely because the Blue Jays have not taken advantage of this bad stretch whatsoever. And until they do, and they're running out of time, the Yankees are gonna treat these next few weeks of baseball for exactly what they are. The dog days of a regular season that is all but officially wrapped up. There's a reason why they're taking their time with Giancarlo Stanton. There's a reason why they let Anthony Rizzo chill on the bench for days to rest his back. There's a reason why Domingo Herman is in the starting rotation. There's a reason why Ron Barnaccio and Clark Schmidt are down in AAA. And that reason, while not great for television and entertainment purposes, the reason is because they can. Now, with all that said, there are some legitimate concerns that I'm going to list off now. But make no mistake, while they may not be the greatest team of all time, the 2022 Yankees will go into October very capable of winning a World Series. But let's go into the concerns I do have. One being the injuries. Giancarlo Stanton, Matt Carpenter, Luis Severino, Miguel Castro, and Harrison Bader. All those guys are currently on the IL, which obviously puts the team far from the finished product. But most, if not all of them, will be players come October. That's why the biggest blow far and away was Michael King. He's one of the few things that I, you know, I'm optimistic as hell. I can't put any positive spin on because he's done for the year. Losing him for the season is devastating, especially when you consider the current state of the Yankee bullpen, which has fallen from being one of the best in baseball to arguably the team's biggest weakness at times, which is my next concern, the bullpen. Overall, though, a big part of that, it's Clay Holmes. Bottom line is he has to get right. If he doesn't get right, this might be the only thing that actually can crush my ability to get excited for a potential World Series run. If we plan on going far in October, there's really no other way to put it. Clay has to be a guy that we can go to. The good thing though, is that it's August, has time to work it out, and along his side will be the one and only Matt Blake, who I think we can all agree on. There's one person who can fix him, it's him. And it very well could just be a fatigue thing, you know, and this is kind of how I feel, which we'll get into with someone else on this team. Clay Holmes has been great a lot longer this season than he's been bad. It's about going on like, I'd say what, three to four weeks now of him struggling the way he has been. Still though, that's four months versus one month. And then there's Gleyber Torres, who's a huge concern as of now, arguably the biggest. He, you know, at the Ulster break, probably was the best version of himself yet. His offense was back with an OPS over 800 and a 129 WRC+. Plus. That to go with well above average defense at second. Glaber was on pace for a five-war season, which would be the best of his career. Since then, though, in the second half, he has looked lost at the plate, batting just 167 with a 469 OPS and a WRC plus of 30, which simply can't happen in the playoffs, which is why I'm choosing to just bank on that it won't. You know, as I just said with Clay Holmes, Glaber was better a lot longer this season than he's been bad. Like, I'm not going to let 25 games of awful play all of a sudden make me forget of how great he was the first 80, you know what I'm saying? But he does have to turn it around, and hopefully it's just a fatigue thing with him or mechanics. I don't like to get into mechanics because, bro, I was a junior on JB in high school. I can't really comment on, like, you know, the skill side of baseball. But what I do know is this team probably isn't going to go too far if Glaber has a 30 WRC plus and he's batting fifth in the Yankees lineup come October. If that's the case and you're getting no offensive production, you might as well just put Josh Donaldson there at third base for his defense, and then you just put DJ at second but once again that's something i'm just choosing to be optimistic with it's one of those things where there's reason to believe these players can be good so as a fan you kind of just gotta have faith and that's what i'm choosing to do 
But yeah, those are my three actual concerns about this team when it comes to October. The injuries, the bullpen, mostly Clay Holmes though, and then Glaber Torres. It's not realistic that, at least besides Michael King, obviously because he's done for the year, it's not unrealistic to think that all those things could be resolved, you know, a month and a half, two months from now, right? And with that, I want to close out this video by reminding you how good the Yankees postseason roster can and should be come October. And we're going to start out with the lineup by position. Catcher, Jose Trevino. First base, Anthony Rizzo. Second base, Glaber Torres. Knock on wood, hope for a bounce back. Third base, DJ LeMahieu. Shortstop, IKF. Left field, Andrew Benintendi. Center field, Harrison Bader. Do not underestimate Harrison Bader replacing Aaron Hicks. One, the defense is far superior. People consider Bader to be the best defensive center fielder in baseball. And two, don't overlook Bader's offense. The dude, since the start of 2021, has been an above league average hitter, something Hicks doesn't come close to being. And two, I mean, this is kind of the same reason, but the dude did slug 460 last year, so he's not a worthless at-bat. And Cardinals fans have told me, when this guy gets hot, he's one of the more exciting players to watch in baseball. Honestly, now that I think about it, I'll probably do an in-depth video on Bader soon to give you guys more of like a full breakdown. But point is, Bader over Hicks is a huge upgrade. Right field, Aaron Judge, best player in baseball. And then DH, Giancarlo Stan. I haven't gone into him too much in this video, but not having him in the lineup for the last, like, pretty much, I guess, what, the last month or so? huge loss guys getting him back not just for you know his actual impact on the ball when he's hitting but just the way it lengthens the line of the protection it gives judge and just to put it into perspective guys josh donaldson is betting cleanup in stanton's place since he's been out donaldson he wouldn't even be in the starting lineup come october then you have the starting rotation which i think is still insanely underrated and has been picking it up as of late Cole the ace then i have nestor cortez as the number two at this current moment frankie montas the three luis severino the four and then if you need a fifth you have james and tyone who's been also picking it up and then the bullpen which you got aroldis chapman scott efros clay holmes knock on wood hopefully he bounces back ron marnasha will be up lou trevino wandy peralta clark schmidt and then albert abreu or lucas licky some combination of those guys i hope i'm not forgetting anybody but the point is this lineup this pitching rotation and the bullpen, which is my biggest concern, if the bullpen could round it to shape and we figure things out within, you know, a month and a half, two months, no one, and I mean, no one can convince me this team isn't capable of winning a World Series. Really. I am still, I'm very high on them because I think they are actually very well set up to win a playoff series. Their defense, I haven't even mentioned their defense overall, they're still a very good, very good defensive team. A team that can still, believe it or not, can hit, pitch rotation, more than good enough to win a playoff series, and a bullpen that without a doubt has talent in it. So, yeah, that's kind of where I stand on the current state of the 2022 Yankees. We're in the dog days. Not fun to watch. I get it. But don't all of a sudden, you know, consider the sky is falling because of a bad 30 games where they've been missing some huge players. Things have not been going their way. We just got to stick it out is my point. We get hot the last two weeks of September going into the playoffs. We will all forget. I guarantee it. We'll all forget about how miserable August was. That's to do it for this video, guys. Let me know how you feel about everything I said in this video. Do you disagree? Do you agree? Just, I don't know. How do you feel about the Yankees overall right now? I will see you guys next time. Let's go Yankees.